hi viewers if you are watching this channel first time please subscribe welcome to communication skills for everyone today let us uh, focus on english language communication skills laboratory viva voci frequently asked questions how to face the viva and how to answer uh, viva questions and all that right so once because uh, even sometimes bright students also they less confident right they because of lack of preparation so this video focusing an average student in mind prepared so that if you go through this video carefully so maybe you can answer you can uh, uh, get through this uh, lab viva voci questions confidently so let us begin they may begin with uh, define phonetics it is like uh, what is phonetics phonetics is a scientific study of speech sounds scientific study of speech sounds and uh, what is phonology second question maybe what is phonology so here phonology is study of speech sounds of a particular language right what is the difference between phonetics and phonology because that these terms are almost similar but there is slight difference so that's what phonetics is scientific study of speech sounds whereas phonology scientific study of speech sounds of a particular language that's the one next what is the role of organs of speech in phonetics because uh, whenever uh, the phonetics class begin then there is a uh, important one organs of speech right so that's what that's what everyone should know what is the role of organs of speech in learning phonetics so here we can say organs of speech otherwise speech organs or articulators this right because uh, the speech organs produce the sounds of language sounds of language so here organs used for speech production okay the organs used for speech production or uh, like the lips teeth alveolar ridge hard palate velum that is like soft palate uh glottis and uh, other parts of the tongue right other parts i use the other parts like tip of the tongue blade of the tongue front of the tongue back of the tongue right it goes on so that's what so the next question how many sounds are there in english language this is also basic question majority of the students do not know how to answer this but it's a very simple there are 44 speech sounds in english language there are 44 speech sounds in english language this is a direct answer even you would like to uh, expand further then you can say they are divided or classified into two like 24 consonant sounds and 20 vowel sounds even further you would like to divide 20 vowel sounds divided into eight diphthongs 12 monophthongs like that next uh, how are speech sounds classified so yeah how are speech sounds classified maybe you may get what are these speech sounds right speech sounds are classified into two types right speech sounds are classified into two types consonant sounds and vowel sounds so whenever you are using consonants and vowels you must be very careful because here when we say consonants and vowels they are related to letters of alphabet whereas here when we say consonant sounds and vowel sounds that's next up what is ipa right this is like something like ipa what is an ipa this is like international phonetic association or international phonetic alphabet so it may be two ways uh, we can say international phonetic alphabet and international phonetic association both are possible right next when we say uh, what is uh, received pronunciation or uh received pronunciation or rp simply sometimes we may uh, sometimes it may be said like uh, uh, simply uh, rp right this is uh, uh, we can say rp is uh, something like the standard form of british english pronunciation standard form of british english pronunciation we indians follow british accent or british pronunciation or britain uh, british english so that's what so based on the educated speech right this is something like that so that is what uh, received pronunciation is the accent that's it we can say it's the accent uh, what britishers follow we also follow the same 
that's what it's a receiver what are passive articulators so the next question when we say what are passive articulators so yeah passive articulator what the articulators that remain stationary that are stable in the production of speech sound so they does they do not move so they are like upper lips sorry upper lip upper teeth the roof of the mouth and rear wall these are uh, passive articulators next when we say passive articulator immediately what are active articulators right the active articulators are the lower lip and the tongue this active the name itself gives active is a kind of movement so lower lip and tongue which moves frequently so that's what they are called active articulators next how many so here yeah, how many letters of alphabet are there so this is also because the majority of the students may confuse your sounds of uh, sounds of english as well as uh, letters of alphabet so here are letters of alphabet 26 letters whereas sounds of sounds here uh, 44 right that's what sometimes to confuse the students they may ask this kind of questions also as well so what is the difference between vowel sounds and consonant sounds this is also right we are talking about consonant sounds vowel sounds what is the difference between this so here a vowel is a speech sound made with mouth fairly open that's right when we produce a vowel the uh, our mouth is wide open so there is no abstraction of air in the mouth whereas when we utter a consonant there is a kind of uh, uh, abstraction of airflow in the mouth so something stops so they are called consonants so that's what uh, that is the difference between vowel sounds and consonant sounds what are voiced sounds how many voiced sounds are there in english language this is also an important right so here voiced sound is a strong sound otherwise we can say voiced sound is produced when the vocal cords vibrate right when the vocal cords vibrate there are 35 voiced sounds 35 voiced sounds how what are that 35 voiced sounds so 15 consonant sounds and remaining 20 vowel sounds so otherwise all vowel sounds they are voiced sounds so the next question what are voiceless sounds when we talk about voiced sounds the next question may be what are voiceless sounds so here yeah, voiceless sounds there is no vibration of vocal cords right so there are nine voiceless sounds in english language so how many voiceless sounds are there the same question almost repeated there how many voiceless sounds are there so there are nine voiceless sounds in english language so just to remember what are nine voiceless sounds you just remember what are the nine voiceless sounds so if you know nine voiceless sounds the remaining 35 all are voiced sounds it is easy to remember so that's also one uh, technique now let us move to the what is the difference between monophthongs monophthongs also called as pure vowels and diphthongs diphthongs also called as like uh, vowel glides or impure vowels like that so here difference a monophthong is a single vowel right it is a single vowel there is only one vowel whereas in diphthong is a double vowel it's a combination of two monophthongs right combination of two monophthongs are called vowel glide or diphthong next uh, what are so when we move to the next one what are consonants uh, sorry how are consonants classified how are consonants classified so this, this is also so previously we got a question like uh, how uh, like uh, uh, we have a kind of question how are speech sounds classified speech sounds classified but here how are consonant classified consonants are classified according to place of articulation manner of articulation and force of articulation what are these place of articulation like uh, right we have bilabial labiogenital dental velar oh this so manner of articulation this is the way in which the abstract abstractor of the airflow is uh, accomplished like uh, like here we can say plosives fricatives affricates approximates and all that 
Next, uh, force of articulation, it's like voiced sounds or voiceless sounds. This is a force of articulation. Next, uh, what, are, what are bilabial sounds? So many bilabial sounds are there. So bilabial sounds are those uh, which are produced using both lips, right? Using both lips. There are three bilabial sounds, p, b, and m. This is the three bilabial sounds. What are plosives? So here, what are plosives? Provide an example. So here, plosives are plosive sounds or consonant sounds that are formed by completely stopping airflow, right? That is. That's what uh, plosives also called as stops, right? Plosives also called as stops. Sometimes they may ask you, what are stops? So stops are like uh, uh, plosives here. So uh, consonant sounds that are formed by completely stopping airflow. Stop sounds can be voiceless, like the sounds p, t, k, or voiced like p, t, k, right? In phonetics, a plosive consonant is uh, right in this is you have to remember what is the plus otherwise stop so next uh, what are uh, affricates so here yeah, next what are affricates so right affricate it is like uh, uh, it is a combination of plosive and uh, fricative sound plosive and fricative sound uh, then we will get affricate so otherwise we can say which begin with the plosive and with fricative so like uh, when we have like chair, j, right? It's a ch, j, right? This is a chair and j example. Next, uh, define fricatives. Define fricatives. Or uh, what are fricatives? A fricative consonant is a consonant that is made when you uh, squeeze air through a small uh, gap in your mouth, right? The small gap in your mouth so that's called uh, uh, fricatives next what are nasal sounds what are nasals or what are nasal sounds so these are uh, nasal sounds or nasalized sounds are uh, sounds whose production right uh, otherwise we can say uh, it's uh, the uh, airflow is go through the nasal cavity right the airflow through the nasal cavity so they are called nasals or nasal sounds. There are three nasal sounds. Next, uh, Y, Y and W are called semi-vowels. Right, next one. Maybe this is interesting, semi-vowels, because most of the students are not aware what are semi-vowels. So here, uh, W and Y are called semi-vowels because here the vocal tract is relatively unrestricted. Otherwise, we can simply say this is like uh, it is it is like uh, it begins like uh, 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 we can say that's like a vowel but functions as a consonant okay it is produced otherwise we can say semi vowels are produced like a vowel but functions as a consonant so let us move to the next one what are semi vowels so again we have a question semi vowel uh, is a speech sound that is produced like a vowel right it's a speech sound produced like a vowel but that functions as a consonant so here the words like uh, yes and uh, well start with semi vowels in the previous question yes and uh, you and w are called semi vowels so the same one you are also we touched with the same next one let us move to uh, what are dental sounds what are dental sounds so here dental sounds involve the tip of the tongue Right, the tip of the tongue because it's a tongue is an act, active articulator which contact with the upper teeth to form a constriction. For example, your dental sounds like th, 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 th. Right, these are dental sounds. Define alveolar sounds. So the next one, define alveolar sounds. Alveolar consonants are consonant sounds that are produced with. Uh, with the tongue close to or touch the ridge behind the teeth on the roof of the mouth roof of the mouth so here like these are like uh, these are called uh, alveolar consonants next uh, what are palato alveolar palato articulated uh, with a blade of the tip of the tongue right which may 
டச் தி அல்விலர் ரேஜ் ஃபார் த மெயின் பாடி ஆஃப் த டாங் நியர் தி ஹார்ட் பேலட் இட்ஸ் எ சிலபிள் ஆர் டிஃபைன்ட் சிலபிள் ஸோ சிலபிள் இஸ் எ யூனிட் ஆஃப் ப்ரனன்சியேஷன் சிலபிள் இஸ் a unit of pronunciation having one vowel sound with or without surrounding consonants with or without surrounding consonant for instance uh, there are two syllables in water right water when we say water trill inferno right this is a called a syllable next what is syllabification right this is also interesting what is syllabification syllabification right if a word contains a fade of uh, consonants syllabification occurs between consonants for example handy and d like uh, uh, selwing right uh, like uh, when we say uh, dialogue dialogue poem poem right here syllabic division between the vowels right this uh, uh, this is called um, uh, w- dividing word into syllables is called syllabification next one what is the structure of a syllable the structure of a syllable generally uh, represents right it's kind of uh, generally it has uh, three parts onset nucleus and the coda next uh, let us come to what are the past tense marker rules past tense marker rules it's a lengthy one but uh, try to say past tense marker rules like uh, uh, simple past and uh, past participle when we add ed to the v1 then how it is pronounced sometimes it is pronounced like t d and it so there is a rule like i'm not talking about the rules but just uh, uh, for example play it is pronounced like played it's d sound play played clean cleaned snow snowed this is d sound t sound like brush brushed laugh laughed sniff sniffed like a uh, ed like id id it is a uh, ed is pronounced as id wait waited paint painted right want wanted next what are plural marker rules this is a plural markers right when we have singular when we convert that into plural we may add uh, yes or ears or ears sometimes right like uh, for example book books it's like sa sound book books rug r u g rug rugs it's a z sound work works leave leaves just look at leave leaves next uh, glass glass which is pronounced in plural like glasses glass glasses language languages bones bounces let's just look at that mounds bounces uh, plural marker rules i'm not talking about rules next what is the difference between content words and functional words content words and functional words this is also functional words includes articles it's like determinants conjunctions prepositions pronouns auxiliary verbs modals qualifiers and question words content words are with specific meanings such as nouns adjectives adverbs and main verbs so here main verbs not uh, auxiliary verbs auxiliary verbs help to construct a sentence so here we are not talking about uh, auxiliary or helping verbs only main verbs they are content words so what are weak forms and strong forms when we say what are weak forms and strong forms the strong form only happens when we pronounce the words alone so which means we give a kind of emphasis emphasis or more stress on something a weak forms are very often pronounced with a swa right swa sound we have a swa sound as they are so weak and sometimes a bit difficult to hear properly when you watch english movies it is very difficult to identify Uh, weak forms because it goes the in speech they are very uh, slightly stressed or otherwise we can say they are sometimes maybe ignored in speech define next uh, define consonant clusters so what are consonant clusters here so consonant clusters uh, is like uh, two or three or four consonant sounds in a row 
so otherwise we can say two three four consonants may come together for example uh, like a black bl right two uh, desk sk two pt like uh, end up helped helped right these are uh, consonant clusters next what are minimal pairs what are minimal pairs and give an example right your minimal pair is two words that vary by only a single sound right two words they vary but only by a single sound because of that single sound meaning may confuse english learners right sometimes may confuse english learners for example when we look at this uh, fan and van fan van yeah fan van only one sound that is f v like sip zip sip zip price price shoe shoe z z these are all uh, minimal pairs now let us look at uh, what is word accent word accent word accent this is also called as word stress even sometimes it is also called as lexical stress right lexical stress what is lexical stress or what is uh, stress stress is part of characteristic way in which a language is pronounced a language is uttered so next uh, what are the rules of stress so rules of stress so there are so many rules but the basic uh, Uh, rules of sentence stress are content words are stressed content words are stressed structure words are unstressed just now we talked there is a question what are the bit, what is the uh, difference between content words and structure words so yeah you just uh, refer the previous right that uh, it gives an idea next uh, define intonation so next one define intonation so intonation also called as tone a tone group so it may be don't confuse when somebody using new word sometimes just to confuse or to check your awareness about something they may ask different words even sometimes synonyms so your intonation is the way the pitch of your voice right the pitch of your voice goes up and down as you talk or reciting something by singing it so here we can say intonation is the way Uh, your voice raises and lowers so what are the different types of tone groups or intonation so we can say there are the three main patterns of intonation or available in english like uh, falling intonation rising intonation and fall rise intonation these are the three and next provide an example for falling intonation or falling this is a kind of thing like falling intonation generally describes how the voice falls on the final stressed syllable of a sentence or group of words or a phrase so here yeah, a falling intonation is very common in wh questions right when we are talking about wh questions we use falling tone what is rising intonation why do we use this tone group so rising intonation generally describes how the voice raises at the end of a sentence right rising intonation is common generally in yes no questions yes no questions so thank you for watching like subscribe and share among your friends thank you for watching